Guys, it's happened to all of us. You don't need to be ashamed. There's a fix. It's called the Tyrannus Antenna Mod, and I'm going to show you how to do it. The first thing to do whenever you're working on your Tyrannus is to take the battery out. You don't want anything energized while you're in there poking around with a screwdriver, potentially short something and damage something. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna flip the top switches away from yourself. And the reason for that is that when you open the Tyrannus, uh, the switch may fall out of the, the case. And if it does, then you won't know which way to put it back in so it's, it's facing the correct direction. If you flip all the top switches away from yourself before you open the Tyrannus, then if one does fall out, you'll know which direction to put it back in again. And then you're gonna remove the six screws from the back of the Tyrannus and separate the halves of the case. I'm a little bit rough here when I pull this open. I'm not as delicate as I should have been. I tried, but I failed. Uh, and you can also see that the top right switch, which I'm gonna show you in just a second here, it has gone with the back half of the case and it is wired up so that it should go with the front half of the case. So when these shoulder switches here come off, they should go with the front, not the back. And you can see here why it's helpful that I push the switch one direction so that I know which way to insert it here so it's going the right way around. If you put it in the wrong way, the switch will just be reversed and you'll, you'll probably want to open it up and flip it back around again just for consistency. There's a little nut that goes down over the top of the switch and I'm just going to insert the switch into place and finger tighten that nut so that the switch stays in place while I'm working on the Tyrannus. Looking at the radio board here in the back of the Tyrannus, this is where the antenna solders on and it's held on with a little bit of extra hot glue. You're going to want to go ahead and peel that hot glue off. A little bit of isopropyl alcohol will make it release. Or if you're just very careful with a, with a tweezers or a, a needle nose pliers, you can just peel it right off. Here I am going in with a hemostat, one of my favorite tools. And away it goes. The next thing to do is to desolder the old antenna. You're going to want to be really careful with your soldering iron here. These pads are very small. If you apply too much heat or if your soldering iron is too hot, you're going to, you're going to lift one of these pads and then that's just it for your radio board. So if you don't feel very confident in your soldering, don't do this. Just pull the wire out and the old antenna is gone. I'm going to get some fresh solder on these pads now. The, the main signal pad, again, is really small and it is very hard to get solder on there without making a mess of this. If this looks scary to you, just stop, do not proceed, do not do this. Next, you're gonna remove the base of the old antenna and you do that by compressing the bottom and lifting it straight out. I have a little bit of trouble here, but I do eventually get it. I suggest that you don't throw this piece out. One of the problems that you're gonna to have to solve at the end is how to mount the new SMA connector or RPSMA, whatever you're using. Mount, how to mount the new connector onto the case of your Tyrannus. And the, one of the things you could consider doing is kind of repurposing this in some way to, uh, to hold the new SMA connector. Now, I don't have any instructions for how to do that. You would have to figure that out on your own, but all I'm saying is that this is a nice, snug little piece of plastic that fits perfectly in this hole. And since you're trying to get the SMA connector potentially to fit neatly in this hole, this piece of plastic may be just what you're looking for. Now I'm gonna prepare the pigtail, and this is actually a very, very thin pigtail cable. It originally had a U.FL connector on it. Uh, some people install a U.FL connector on their Tyrannus as part of this mod, but my perspective is that I'm probably never gonna do this again, so the idea that I'm gonna have a connector on there to plug and unplug, I'd rather just solder the coax myself. Uh, the soldering the coax is pretty difficult, and it may be easier for you to solder on the U.FL connector versus uh, doing the, the coax. But I have heard some people say that soldering on the UFL connector, they, uh, they, they get worse uh, SWR, which is a measure of the quality of your antenna. So it's a toss up. Uh, this, however you decide to do this, it's not gonna be easy. So uh, you, you just pick your poison, I suppose. You can see here I've removed the outer sheath of the coax. Well, you could see if my camera wasn't focused, sorry about that. I've removed the outer sheath of the coax and I'm uh, folding back the wire braid and I'm gonna just twist the wire braid together into one little bundle. You wanna make really sure that there are no spare wires, no little strands sticking out and not getting to be part of the bundle because if any of those strands touch somewhere where they're not supposed to touch, they will compromise your signal.
And then I'm gonna remove the insulation from the inner wire and boy, this requires a very, very fine touch and a sharper knife than I'm using, to be honest with you. Uh, you gotta not cut the inner wire and just cut the sheath. I find just making a few little, almost indentations, almost scoring it and then pulling it off with my fingernail seems to work the best. And here it is. Uh, you want about a millimeter of insulation between the braid, the folded back braid, and where the exposed center wire is. If you could get less than a millimeter, that'd be even better, but you wanna make sure that the uh, outer braid doesn't touch the center wire in any way. You want just enough insulation for that to happen. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tin these wires with solder, and I don't know why, but I don't seem to have video of that, but <laughs> you've seen me tin wires a million times. Uh, then I'm gonna dry fit this into place and I'm gonna sh shorten the wires up so that they're the right length to, to touch the pads exactly how the wire is gonna go in. When you shorten up the center conductor, you want the center conductor to be as short as possible. The exposed length of center conductor is gonna be a radiating element and it's gonna affect the antenna characteristics of the whole system. So you want that to be as short as possible. Less than about two millimeters of total exposed length is ideal. And I know you guys are gonna hate me for this, but I also don't have video of me doing the soldering. And the reason is it is such fiddly soldering. There's no way I could record it. My, my camera won't zoom in tight enough, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna show you, this is a, a loop close up of the finished joint. And you can see, I feel okay about this. I don't love the fact that that antenna wire is sticking up out of the solder joint. Uh, and I also don't love that the solder joint for the antenna wire has that little crater in it right near where the wire enters the joint. Uh, any sharp edges on a joint like this, I, I really want a nice smooth solder ball. On the other hand, the, the braided wire sheath and the ground connection there, I feel pretty confident about that. It looks pretty solid. It's nice and smooth. I feel okay about that. I will repeat this again. If this looks scary to you and you don't feel confident about this, just stop, don't do this. You will destroy your radio board and have to buy a replacement and they're not cheap. Uh, this, is, this is very difficult soldering and is not for the faint of heart. Now I'm gonna come in with a hot glue gun and I'm gonna reinforce this with some hot glue. The last step then is to mount the SMA connector on your Tyrannus. Now what I'm doing here is I'm mounting it in the original hole with some hot glue. In order to find out uh, where the connector needs to be, I've screwed the antenna on and I'm going to just press that flush against the top of the case. And that's a good trick to use no matter how you mount this SMA connector in order to get a nice good looking install with the antenna flush. I do not actually recommend hot glue as the best approach for this. Um, the hot glue will, sometimes it'll give, especially if you're in a very hot environment, it'll soften again. Uh, and what can happen is that as you're twiddling the antenna, the antenna can twist the coax cable. The coax cable may get damaged and you may damage your radio board. It's just like turning on a video transmitter with, uh, without an antenna connected if you turn your Tyrannus on without an antenna connected. Now the Tyrannus will yell at you. It will say antenna malfunction or antenna fault or something like that. But just don't, don't take any chances. If you just need to get this done in a pinch, hot glue is an acceptable solution, but it's not the best solution. Another solution that some people do is they drill a hole in the case of the Tyrannus just behind where this is. And that's fine too, but I didn't really like the way that looked. I'm gonna add a little bit more hot glue where the cable passes this uh, screw standoff. I got this idea from the way it came from the factory. Just as a little bit more strain relief if for any reason this cable should get tugged on. We really don't wanna pull those solder pads off. And then I'm gonna reassemble everything. Fold the clamshell back together. Make sure not to pinch any wires or anything. Make sure your switches are all in the right place. Oh, whoops, <laughs> there's a switch hanging out there. I'm gonna need to fix that. Fold it all back together and reinsert your screws and you're done. Before I go, there's a couple other things I wanna show you. Uh, one of them is some options for mounting the antenna uh, that are a little better than what I did with the hot glue. Uh, what I actually ended up doing is taking a, uh, an SMA lock washer 
and tightening it down with some SMA nuts so that the the uh, it sat in exactly the right height against the uh, in the Tyrannus's case. And then I epoxied it in. So there's no going back from that. <laughs> but I figured the chances of me having to do this again were probably pretty slim. If I have to drill out the epoxy later, I will be really sorry. There are some 3D printed options, which I'm going to show you here. And I'm not going to give you links to all of these because all you have to do is you go to yegi.com and you search for Tyrannus Antenna. That's what I did. You can do it too. I'm not going to copy all the links down because I know I just, I'm, I'm bad at that. But there are many options here that I'll show you. One of them is this little guy here, which sort of fits over the top of the existing Tyrannus, uh, Tyrannus case and screws together with some M3 screws. You can see how that works right here. Okay, fine. Here's uh, one that goes down sort of on the inside of the case. That's pretty nice and low profile. I think that might be my favorite of all of them. You can see how that goes on there. Very nice, very nice. Uh, here's one that goes, uh, it, it interacts with, I think, the original maybe piece of that antenna. I'm not sure. Maybe this is all 3D printed. Anyway, there you go. That's what that looks like. Ah, whatever. Here's another one that goes on top. This one, these two, this one and, and that one, kind of they kind of stick up high. I'm not sure they're the best looking ones for me, but there you go. And then here's one that actually, it's a little hard to see because it's printed in black. You can see what it looks like here. But it actually goes down on the inside of the Tyrannus and, and sits on those two screw standoffs. That's pretty clever. And it ends up looking like this. So you can really just have your pick, have your pick. Or you can just epoxy it in like I did if you're impatient and don't want to. I didn't have a 3D printer, so I just epoxied it in. Anyway, that's those are some options for um, for mounting the antenna. Now I'm going to show you uh, how to make sure that your antenna is working right when you – like did you screw up the solder joint? Is Have you got the right antenna on there? I'm going to show you how to do that. And that involves a thing called SWAR, S-W-R. So in, in the world of RF – SWR or SWAR stands for standing wave ratio and it is a measure of how much energy that goes into the antenna gets bounced back by the antenna. So if an antenna was perfectly tuned and perfectly efficient, 100% of the energy that you put into the antenna would be radiated out the antenna and that would be the best case scenario. In reality, the antenna is not perfectly tuned and perfectly impedance matched to the signal that's going into it and some of the energy that you send into the antenna gets reflected back from the antenna and is not transmitted out. As, as electromagnetic energy, RF waves. Uh, and the, the, basically, the lower the standing wave ratio, the better matched the antenna is to the transmission system. So the best case scenario is a, a, an SWR of zero. Uh, or, or actually, we're getting a little bit off course here. The Tyrannus, it's not really measuring the standing wave ratio. It's giving you sort of a pseudo approximation of standing wave ratio. So actually, in the real world, in the world of RF, the best standing wave, wave ratio is 1, 1.0. It's basically 100% of the energy got transmitted. But that's not how the Tyrannus does it. It, it gives you a, the SWAR measurement measurement of zero is the best and higher numbers are worse. So let me show you how to get that. Before I show you how to get that, I should acknowledge this is an older release of OpenTX. This is not OpenTX 2.0. In OpenTX 2, I think it was 2.0, they redid the way that telemetry works. So what I'm going to show you will not work for you if you have a newer Tyrannus. Why don't I have the new one? Because I, this works fine for me and I have a lot of things to do other than update my Tyrannus and have to redo all my models. So I'm going to show you how to do it. If you have an older Tyrannus, this will work exactly like I show you. If you have a newer Tyrannus, I'll tell you what you have to do differently as I go through it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Menu. And then I'm going to go to the telemetry page, and in order to do that, I'm going to hold down the page button to go back one screen. If you've always gone page, 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 if you didn't know, you can hold down that button to go back. Watch. Oh, so there's something new. You hold down the page button, you go back one page. If you're constantly overshooting by one, this is a great one. You're trying to find the mixer, and you go page, 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 page. Oh, God, I passed it. Just hold down the button. You don't have to go back around again. I'm now going to go down until I get to the screen one right here. And you'll see my screen one is set to bars. I'm gonna change screen one to nums. And then I'm gonna choose what I wanna see on screen one. And what I wanna see on screen one 
is Swar. So there it is. Now I've got Swar showing on screen one. If you have Tyrannus 2.0, then your process is going to be different in this way. You will not see, see how I had to scroll through all of those sensors, the different things? You will only see the sensors that are actually present on your model. So you will have gone through the discover sensors process, and there's actually a great Painless 360 video on how to set up FreeSky telemetry uh, in OpenTX 2.0. So if you want to, you can find that. But basically, you'll go through the screen, you'll hit discover sensors, and you'll discover all the sensors that your copter has, which will probably be an A2 sensor, maybe there'll be a VFAST sensor, and one of the sensors you'll discover is the SWAR sensor. The SWAR sensor is present present for any uh, receiver, any telemetry enabled receiver. But here's the catch. You have to have a telemetry enabled receiver bound in order to see the SWAR measurement. And that's a little bit annoying because the SWAR is not really a sensor on the model. It's an internal thing that the Tyrannus is doing. So if you have OpenTX 2.0 or newer, you will need to go get a, a, a copter or go get a spare receiver. You'll need to bind it. You'll need to have it powered up. And when you do discover sensors, then you'll find the SWAR sensor and you'll be able to set the screen up just like I've showed you. But because I have the older version, I actually get out of that. On the flip side, I have to scroll through all those sensors that don't really exist uh, to find it. It would Honestly, in my opinion, it would be best if the Tyrannus showed the SWAR sensor regardless of whether you have uh, receiver bound, but that wouldn't be consistent with their architecture. Having set that up, I'm going to exit out, and then I'm going to hold down the page key, which I believe will take me straight to the telemetry screen. And sure enough, there it is. And there's my SWAR, which is one. And that is almost as good as it gets. Uh, you want a very low number here, you, zero or one. If you see a zero, you could be just having a bogus reading. And if you look, you can see that as I hold the antenna with my hand, the number starts changing a little and you can see the effect. And actually what you can also do is you can start to unscrew the antenna. Now do this very carefully. You do not want to leave the Tyrannus powered up with the antenna off. But as I unscrew the antenna, watch what happens to the SWAR. See how it's going up? That's good. That indicates that the SWAR is working and being measured correctly. And I'll screw the antenna back on. It'll go back down to a low number. If you don't have a very low number here, there's two possibilities. One is that you have screwed up the soldering, okay? And the other is that your antenna is not actually uh, a 2.4 gigahertz antenna or it's not tuned correctly. So there's a couple possibilities there. If your SWAR is in the, in the teens, you're probably okay, but it would be best to get it down as low as possible for maximum range. By the way, if you ever power up your Tyrannus with the antenna disconnected, this will happen. Radio antenna defective. Okay, now don't power up your in, your Tyrannus like that, because I've heard, I've, I haven't verified this for myself, because I don't want to take the chance of smoking my Tyrannus radio board. If you ever hear your Tyrannus say that, power it down immediately. Uh, because you could burn out your radio board. Now, in theory, I suppose the Tyrannus would detect that and it would power the uh, radio board down internally. That's what you would hope would happen. I don't know if that will happen, and I'm not taking any chances. Okay, there you go. That is the end of this and tutorial. And now you can take this on yourself or not as you see fit. Happy flying.